I forgot all of my German and I had my husband in a headlock literally translating word for word everything that the midwives and the doctor were saying. Tag and welcome to life in Germany for those of you who haven't met me yet my name is Jenna I am a Canadian expat here living in Germany I've created this channel to go through all of the tips and all of the lessons I've learned along the way so today we're gonna to be talking about giving birth in Germany and that is something that absolutely terrified me when I first got to Germany thinking before I give birth, I'm gonna have to learn the language, I'm gonna have to know exactly what to do. There's so many things that you have to think about before you plan to give birth in Germany. So my little one is almost two years old now, and I sat down and started thinking the other day, what is 10 things that I wish I had have known before giving birth in Germany? So today we're gonna jump right in it and I'm gonna go through 10 things I really wish I knew before I decided to give birth in Germany. Now don't get me wrong, these aren't gonna be negative. A lot of them are positive, but it's things that would be really, really helpful if you knew in advance what you were diving into. <laughs> so number one, the biggest thing that shocked me was that in Canada, you're used to having one doctor or one midwife that's with you through the entire process. And when you're about to give birth, you call that doctor and you say, hey, you know, I'm about to deliver. And then they have to get up regardless of where they are, or what they're doing, if they're at the dinner table or whatnot. And they go deliver your baby when you're ready. In Germany, it doesn't matter when you give birth, it's basically you're gonna get that doctor and you're gonna get the midwives who are on the shift at that time. Which leads me to point number two, and that is finding a midwife. Finding a midwife, depending on what city you live in, can be very, very difficult. I'm in Dusseldorf, Germany, and finding an English midwife, I could forget about. And even if you're willing to partner with a German midwife, that is still a very difficult process. And of course, you don't wanna just hire any midwife to partner up with you during this birthing process. You wanna find one that matches your characteristics and somebody that you get along with. If you get lucky, you'll find one quite quickly, but usually it takes quite a bit of time. Now, point three is that that midwife who you build this awesome relationship with through your pregnancy, is not going to be there during the birth. And that's not always true. There are some exceptions. If you manage to partner up with a midwife who is part of the hospital, who works with the hospital where you're planning on giving birth, then they can be there in the room while you're giving birth. Otherwise, you're gonna get one of the midwives who's working in the hospital at that point in time who will be delivering your baby. I was there for 26 hours before I gave birth, so uh, there was a rota so many rotations of different midwives and every single time I'd just meet them, get to know them, I'd think, oh my God, you know, this might be the midwife who's delivering my baby and then the shift would end and I would get a new midwife. <laughs> you just never know who you're gonna get and that was super shocking for me when I first learned that my midwife wasn't even gonna be there in the hospital room with me. Some of you might be thinking, well, why do you even have a midwife if they're not allowed to be in the hospital with you? And that's because in Germany they have a really, really awesome system where the midwife, regardless of whether you're on public or private insurance, is there for you before birth and after birth. Depending on the insurance you're on, private might be a little bit different. They might offer more meetings before birth, more meetings after birth, but nonetheless, I'm on public insurance and I found that I had more than enough meetings with my midwife and basically before birth they come over and they see how you're doing, they ask you, you know, are you nervous about anything, what can I prepare you for, they can listen to the heartbeat of the baby with you and they can give you all the tips you need to get prepared and be ready for birth and then after they come by initially on a daily basis and then on a weekly basis to make sure that you and your baby are bonding well, that you're breastfeeding okay, that your body is okay, they check to make sure that your stomach muscles have tightened up and if you have any stitches that they're recovering well. It is such a luxury in Germany to be able to have this midwife basically guide you through the whole thing. When I first gave birth, I thought, oh my God, you know, this is my first kid. How do I feed it? How do I change its diaper? What happens when the umbilical cord falls off? These are all the questions that I didn't prepare myself beforehand. So it was really nice to have a midwife there to help me bathe him and figure 
everything out. So that was such a nice feeling to have somebody there for you. Always, even as an expat, especially if you don't have family here to help you. Another point that's good to know is that depending on what insurance you're on, whether that's private or public, some have different perks than others. And I actually had no idea that there were any perks. I was with Bama when I gave birth and they actually had some 200 euro package where you could take that 200 euros and spend it on any baby related course that you wanted. And that includes the Geburtsvorbereitungs course, which is their birth preparation course here in Germany. You can also take the Rückbildungs course, which is a course that helps you build back the strength in your pelvic floor after giving birth. And it just depends on what insurance you're on. So it's always a good idea to check beforehand. And I don't think it's worth switching from one provider to the other just because they're giving you a little bit more of a perk. Uh, but it's a cool thing to know that some of the insurance providers, whether public or private, do offer some uh, cool little packages. If you're struggling finding a birth prep course in Germany, of course, uh, even those of us who are learning German, sometimes it's hard to take a birth prep course in another language when you know that when you're giving birth, you're probably not gonna even remember a word of German. That was what I was worried about, and I have to be honest, that's exactly what happened. And everybody said, that's nonsense. You're not gonna forget your German when you're giving birth. And I have to tell you, they were wrong. I forgot all of my German, and I had my husband in a headlock. My husband is German, thankfully. I had him in a headlock, literally translating word for word everything that the midwives and the doctor were saying, because I just couldn't figure it out when you're going through so much pressure. So if you're anything like me and you want to be prepared, I do have a blog post that I'll link up here for you of different birth prep classes that you can take online in English. Otherwise, if you live in the Düsseldorf area, we also have a few English prep courses in person that are mentioned there as well. And if you live in one of the bigger cities like Berlin or Munich, you're probably bound to find an English course somewhere. They are usually not included in your insurance, if especially if it's uh, public insurance, uh, but it's worth looking into and it's definitely important to be well prepared. So if you feel like you need to take that in English, definitely pay the extra money to learn that. Number six, you should probably know that if you're under public insurance, you are not entitled to a private room. You actually will not get a private room unless you ask, and if you ask, then you will be charged for it. This was something that really shocked me, especially when I was about to give birth. I always thought, mm, you know, it wouldn't be so bad sharing a room with other women, but what I didn't think about was my water broke a day earlier, so I actually spent the night before giving birth in the hospital in a shared room with two other women who had just given birth. And so here I am having hundreds of thoughts running through my head, can't sleep on my own anyway, but then I have two screaming babies. And in the hospital, the night nurses will come through, flick on the lights, ask them if they're okay, put the baby on the boob, and do all of these different things for the babies and the moms. Meanwhile, I'm laying there babyless at the moment and just like praying, can you please not come back in? I really need my sleep because we all know giving birth is probably one of the most exhausting things you're gonna have to go through. The day that baby did come, I bawled my eyes out. And I mean, of course, it wasn't worth bawling my eyes out, but I think you, the emotions are running wild. And I just thought, I can't take care of this child without my husband, like I needed him here. And it was my birthday and I was so sad and I just didn't want him to leave. And I asked the nurses, can I please have a private room at that point? you really think, you know, it doesn't matter how much it costs, I just need somebody there for me, especially when you speak English and not so much German. So finally, I did manage to get a private room with my husband for the next few nights, which was really, really nice. You either have the option to pay for that private room at the hospital, or you can also get something that's called a Zusatzversicherung, which is an add-on to your insurance package, similar to what you would get if you have private insurance. Now, I should mention that just because you have private insurance does not entitle you to a private room. The option is there, but if there are so many other women giving birth at the same time as you in the hospital, even with private insurance, you might need to share a room with one, two, or three other women. Number seven, you will get this book called a Muta Pass, and this book contains everything that the doctors need to know about you and your child before giving birth. Germans will tell you, you have to carry this book around with you 
everywhere you go from the minute you're pregnant to the minute you give birth. And you think, oh, I'm not gonna take this mutapas out if I go to a restaurant or if I'm going away for the weekend and we're going camping or something because this document is so important that you don't wanna lose it. The problem is you kind of do have to carry it with you all the time. And I always thought, you know, it's not that important. You know, if I have to give birth, then I have to give birth and it's not a big deal. But I did learn my lesson a few weeks ago one of my friends actually ended up giving birth to her child at 24 weeks and of course she was thinking, you know, I'm 24 weeks pregnant, I'm not gonna be giving birth at the moment so I don't need to bring my mutapas with me on vacation. Unfortunately, she did end up going through the contractions and needing to give birth at 24 weeks. She didn't have that mutapas so what happened? The doctors actually waited. Her husband had called me and asked me to run to their house find the mutapas, take a picture of every single page and send it back to the doctors before they could actually give her an emergency C-section. You don't want that happening to you. It's really, really stressful if you don't have your mutapas. Just a little sneak peek so you guys can see what it is. This was my book when I was pregnant and it goes through all of your allergies, the size of the child, if they can hear the heart tone, the way the child's laying, um, any different uh, shots that you needed to get. There's a ton of information in here. They do all of your blood tests, they do a diabetes test, they do all of these different tests and mark that all in this book right here. Number eight. This is a great one and especially coming from North America. After you give birth to your baby, a lot of the times in North America you are required to leave the hospital within 24 hours. Of course it depends on how many people are in the hospital and how busy the hospital is at that point in time, but usually you are kicked out a little bit too early than you would have liked to. And before I gave birth to my son, I thought, well, I kind of want to leave before 24 hours because to be honest, I hate hospitals. When you're in the hospitals in Germany, it's totally different from what I expected. I had done the tour, I knew what I, where I was going, I knew which room I was gonna be giving birth in, but after you have birth, you're so tired that it was such a luxury to be able to stay an extra few days in the hospital. They bring your food to you, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There's somebody that comes in and, and takes photos of your child, not always, but in, in the hospital I was in, and that was really nice. A lot of you will actually be in the hospital and think, you know what, I don't really wanna leave. The only reason why I wanted to leave was because it was my birthday. And I thought maybe celebrating in the hospital isn't the nicest way to celebrate my birthday. I just wanted to be at home with, with my son and celebrate my birthday that way. Number nine, I don't wanna freak you out, but if there's one thing in Germany that's really, really difficult when you're preparing to give birth, that is the fact that you have to be so well prepared with all of your paperwork before giving birth to make sure that everything goes smoothly after your child is born registering them for Kindergeld to make sure that you're getting the money from the government, registering for Elterngeld to make sure that as soon as you've given birth that you're going to be getting that money for being off of work through, and then as an international you also have to provide legal German translations of the documents that you're providing. And on top of that, when your baby is registered with its birth certificate, you can also get those international copies so you can gain citizenship in the country that you are from as well. Of course, there is so much stuff that you need to remember and so much paperwork that you should probably have prepared before you even go to the hospital. I actually had it like a stack of paper this thick in an envelope and I brought it with me in my hospital bag. If you need help with the checklist and the whole paperwork process, I am included in the link right here, which is the ultimate baby checklist before you give birth in Germany. Make sure you go through it step by step and you'll know exactly what to do, what to download, and you'll be good to go. Number 10, and this is gonna bring me back to my point where I told you guys, yes, I forgot my German when I was giving birth. So there are some words that you should know before giving birth in Germany that will definitely help you with the process. I know it helped me despite the fact that I needed my husband to translate every word into my ear, but, here are some words that you should know before giving birth. Wehen. Wehen means contractions, and this is one you're gonna hear so, so often. Make sure you know when these Wehen start to happen that you let the nurses know. 
Kaiserschnitt is one you really should know. That means C-section. So if you're gonna have to go through an emergency C-section, they're gonna let you know it's time for the Kaiserschnitt. Weiter or drücken are probably the number one words you're gonna hear and the easiest words that you will hear, which basically means keep on going and push. <laughs> PDA is one you're really gonna wanna know because the PDA means epidurals. Krankenschwester is the nurse. So if you need a nurse to come check on you, you can always ask for the Krankenschwester. Der Muttermund means your cervix. Mutterkuchen, <laughs> mother cake, it actually means your placenta. Fruchtwasser is your amniotic fluid. Die Scheide is your vagina. Der Schleim, sounds disgusting, but it is slime, your mucus, otherwise schleim stecker, which is your mucus plug, nabelschnur, which is the umbilical cord, and of course, you'll probably already know this by now, but der Kreissaal is the delivery floor. So those are the top 10 things I wish I had have known before coming to Germany. If you've given birth in Germany, I'd love to know what you would suggest people who are giving birth for the first time should know before giving birth. If you haven't given birth in Germany and you're about to, let me know what you're the most worried about. And of course, if you have any questions at all, you can ask me in a private email. I'll just include my email right below for you. Otherwise, you can pop a question in the comment section. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't or you think I should include other information, just let me know. Don't forget to subscribe. This is one of my first ever videos on YouTube. So the more you subscribe, the more videos I'm able to create because of course I want to create these videos to help you out the best I can when moving to Germany. Thanks for watching and bis zum nächsten Mal.